political analyst. She was actually the first woman to have been the spokesperson for the Palestinian government. Noah, thank you so much indeed for your time. Uh, first of all, your feelings before we get proper analysis from you, if you don't mind. I mean, this is obviously a very emotive subject. What's your feeling about where it might be heading right now? Well, I'm, I'm quite disturbed and I'm, I'm very concerned uh, about where this can go because what I've seen since uh, even the beginning, the, even before the beginning of Ramadan, was a very concerted effort by Israel to set up things and to preempt things and to present Ramadan, which is a month of worship and introspection and, 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 and giving, as a violent month. It has imposed restrictions on Palestinians, provoked emotions at Al-Aqsa. So I am quite concerned about where this is going, especially after the brutal uh, uh, treatment of worshippers that we saw overnight. Not all of our viewers possibly might be aware of an agreement that Israel agrees to that only Muslims are allowed to worship at Al-Aqsa. Do you feel that over the past, say, year, year and a half or so, that the Israeli security forces have actually been emboldening and even helping illegal settlers come to this holy place for both religions, but with that agreement in mind, knowing what their presence at Al-Aqsa is going to trigger in terms of the Palestinian reaction, that the Israeli security forces have almost been encouraging these kind of incursions into Al-Aqsa. Actually, the, the uh, Israeli minister in charge of security, uh, Ben Gvir, has been inviting and calling on settlers to storm uh, Al-Aqsa and to even uh, offer sacrifice during uh, Passover, which would be just uh, catastrophic. Uh, Israel has not respected what is referred to as the legal and historic status quo of holy sites, uh, including Al-Aqsa. This, uh, this status quo applies to Al-Aqsa Mosque. It also applies to holy Christian sites uh, in, uh, in occupied uh, Jerusalem. And just to give a little bit more context to the viewers, Israel is the occupying power in Jerusalem. It has no sovereignty over the Al-Aqsa Mosque uh, compound. It does not have the authority to enter that holy site, uh, much less to curtail worshippers from uh, carrying out their uh, religious rights in that, uh, Muslim worshippers in that uh, uh, compound. And so everything we've seen, including storming the Al-Aqsa, which is not the first time, uh, including uh, trying to decide when Palestinian Muslims can and cannot pray at that holy site. All of these actions are not just illegal, they are willfully provocative. Nor, if you don't mind, I'm going to put you in a slightly difficult position because having been the spokesperson for the Palestinian government, what do you feel <laughs> about the government's connection now with the Palestinians we see on the streets who are protesting, who are staging uh, demonstrations against the Israeli occupation and about simply the quality of their life. Because many people say that the PA, the Palestinian Authority, is slowly losing touch with those people. They're a younger generation. Mm. Well, the younger and older generation. Uh, um, and it's not a tough position to answer this because the reality is right now the Palestinian government is weakened. It's weakened because of international act inaction, because of its own uh, very serious shortcomings when it comes to achieving national unity and answering uh, to the people rather than to international demands. Um, and we've seen very stern positions from the Palestinian leadership, but really the crisis at the Palestinian level is far deeper than to be treated by such uh, statements alone. The fact is right now there is an impasse. While there is a very uh, uh, violent, very brutal Israeli government in power that is taking very serious, very deadly actions on the ground against Palestinians in the occupied West Bank, including uh, Jerusalem. We have a Palestinian uh, polity that is weak and divided and uh, that requires uh, uh, um, serious uh, thinking and serious reinvention, really, to be able to be uh, um, worthy of all the sacrifices that ordinary Palestinians are doing uh, to demand their freedom and their right to self-determination. That crisis, though, does not really take away from the fact that there are obligations under international law that Israel has, which it, it is violating, and that there are obligations that other states have 
towards the situation on the ground, which need to be fulfilled, including protecting Palestinians, holding Israel accountable uh, uh, for those uh, violations, serious violations of international law, and ensuring that there is a clear path towards Palestinian freedom rather than managing the status quo, which is untenable and literally explosive. Noro, they really appreciate your time. Thank you so much indeed.